I want to kill Chris. Chris, honest to I don't know if you have dyslexia or a broken tape measure, okay? It doesn't fit. He's an idiot. I am right here. I'm on the edge. We dropped $28,000 on these units, which is like 20% of our budget. I mean, I can't afford to break them, and look what we're trying to do to get them in. We already had to take out the front door. Huge deal. Now we've got a quarter of an inch of clearance between the unit and the inside doorway. Leaves us absolutely zero room to get them in. And we're trying to use a dolly. There's no room for a dolly. How, where does it hit right now on the, on the little rolly dolly? It's just, just above 81. And this is 80 and a half, 80 and three eighths. So you got to pull that dolly out. I think it's going to express it. Then we'll tear it out, Dave. St I want to kill him. I want to kill the guy right now. Unless we can figure some alternative out, I'm going to have to take the floor up, which is time and money that we do not have. Um, do we have any little kind of like like little uh, pieces of pipe? Just roll them. Huh? Yeah. Roll them. But you, you can't roll it that way. No, 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 no. No, put them, put them this way. But then you've only got two sections on the ground. It'll push faster. Right, if you have if you have like a piece of pipe, it'll, it's like a rail railroad, right? It'll just push faster because less is touching. Right on, you're down. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Get worse. Yeah. Let's go. Ha! <laughs> hey, hey now. <laughs> Elaine is one tough cookie with great ideas, and she just refuses to take no for an answer. Chris mismeasured all of his equipment, and because of that, it's taken us extra time and extra manpower. Chris, man. If he thinks I'm going to let him move in the big ones, I mean, he's smoking something. It's not happening. Do you have any idea what it took to get the unit inside? Mm -hmm. I think the best thing to do is just let Dave and that other guy do it. it, it I don't want Dave doing it. Alan's going to come back here and help me do it when he gets back here. You and Alan cannot do what we just did. It will never happen. You will break it. The only way to get it in is to let Dave and that other guy do it. And they're exhausted and they're tired, but there's no way I'm letting you and Alan do what they just did. Dave, I don't want him moving those things in here. Dave, I got it. I can definitely handle it. You know I'm a big boy. No, no, Chris. I can, if I can no, handle Chris, going. No, please, no. Chris, I'm maxed, okay? You weren't here. You don't know what it took to get him in here. Everybody's a little upset about the mismeasurement because it's a big deal. It's not so much that we can't. There was no mismeasurement. OK. All right. Chris, no, stop it. Figure it go out. Go out. Go. Go on. I'm having a really hard time with Chris. He's not listening. It doesn't work for me. You don't understand. You're not getting it. Mm -hmm. What you did today was so time consuming. Dave's pissed off. They weigh 1,000 pounds. There's three people. We don't have the right equipment to get them out. I just go on and on. It's not cool. I'm, it's not cool. Chris has like got to do better than this. Like I have enough problems without stupid, stupid, stupid stuff like equipment that doesn't fit through two doors. I don't know how I'm gonna deal with Chris moving forward right now. I'm 10 days away from the soft opening. There's so much to do and I cannot be dealing with him right now. At least I'm calm. I'm a little too mad to talk to him and I'm too tired to work it out. See if we can find some creamer of some sort. He's got to have like evaporated milk or something like that for cooking. Everybody's getting coffee black, and that's final. Wait. Oh, that's bug spray. 
the soft opening is in nine days and the team needs to be ready. They have to push themselves to the max. Every single tranche needs to be ready. We need to be able to serve food. We need to be able to serve coffee. We need to be able to serve produce. In addition to getting open for the soft opening, I want five rooms done upstairs because what I'd like to do is get them completely painted and furnished and perfect so I can take pictures and put them on the website. It's got to be done. All right, now the hard part. So before the soft opening, we literally need to finish the installation of the refrigeration. And I'm tired of like, I'm at the, you know, uh, the mercy of Dave or waiting on somebody else to do something. So I put together a small team and we can get this cooler unit inside. See how it goes over that bolt right there? You see the bolts lifted up? There you go. I have no idea why Elaine doesn't have confidence in me to do something so simple as get a 12 foot cooler into the grocery store. What, I can't do that? I'm, I'm not strong enough and manly enough to do that. I can run a freaking drill. I can run power tools. I just ran a forklift today. I mean, I can do that. So I don't need to bother Dave to do anything. I can do it myself. So we're gonna flop it down and then we're gonna put it on some dollies and then we're gonna shove it in. Oh All right. Away. Yep. Okay, and we're just gonna let it down, okay? That's okay. So we'll get it on the dollies and then we'll get it right to that door. All right, Kenny, let's go ahead and start tipping it forward. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, what do we, what do we hit? What in the world are, Chris, these things are so delicate. Please put it down. Because it's scratching the linoleum. We either have to take the linoleum off or we got to work with it. And we're going super, super slow right now, so I'm making sure that nothing in here is getting scratched. And we're just taking that box Except off the top. Except this huge, giant scratch right here. And this huge scratch right here. Please don't wreck the linoleum. It'll come out. We got all the other ones in without scratching the floor, and the floor is scratched. Chris gets under my skin because he just doesn't listen at all about anything. It's like he's hearing you, but he's not, it's not, I don't know what it does when it gets in there. Dave, Chris has got the thing off the truck on its side, but I have to get the unit in without it breaking in two. He won't listen to me. This is making Dave and the team absolutely crazy. It's just adding more things to do. Dave's already got a list a mile long, and now he's gonna stop everything and take care of this. Dave's literally my MVP. If he quits, the job doesn't get done. We're only gonna do short bursts, right? Like two feet at a time. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh, stop. Dave's a big, strong man, but I'm pretty capable myself. One, two, three. I mean, I can build a house if you give me the right plans. So there's not a lot I can't do. One, two, three. Right on, that's good enough. I wanna be clear, I can't like, I'm not in a position to be firing anybody and there are really great qualities that Chris does have, but organization and staying in his lane and doing what he's supposed to be doing, it just like escapes him. This whole thing about getting these delivered and getting them in here, I know you really wanted to do it and I get it, I get it. But you have a very specific skill set. It is incredibly viable to the business. So your task is, I need that menu, and that's you. I can't do, I've never made a menu. I'm hearing you 100%. Okay. What he should be doing is the menu and dealing with that stuff and leave this to the people that are doing construction. He's not a construction guy. Okay. Okay. Oh my place is such a mess. I'm so hungry, I'm punchy. With so many projects happening at the same time, Dave is bringing in some subcontractors to speed up the process. He's a dear friend of Russell's and he's been doing this and helping him as a favor. Some of the $150,000 budget will go to paying these contractors. Hi, and thank you for coming. My name's Elaine, for any of you who have not met me. First of all, after two completely insane days, the crispers are finally in and thank you for all of your hard work on that. So we have a soft opening in eight days. When I say soft open, I mean if someone wants to come in and eat, we're gonna feed them. We just need to figure out exactly what the system is gonna be. Prioritizing how we get there has become a little bit of a problem. 
stay on task. What we're doing here is so outside of the box. Usually I run my projects in a very different way. First of all, I always start on the top and work my way down because dust and dirt fall down. Instead, we're doing it backwards. We're doing everything on top of everything. We're tripping over each other. It's frustrating. Okay, everybody stay in your lane, okay? It's hard, I know it's hard. Please stay in your lane. It'll be so much easier and smoother. Construction has got to be done by soft open. We've got to get all the kinks out. I have to have this place 100% operational. It's the only way that I can prove that this is a million dollar business. Everybody's doing a great job. Not one person could leave. No. And we'll get done. You, you guys are all needed and very much appreciated. Guys, don't forget to invite your friends and family to the soft opening. You're awesome. OK. Thanks, everybody. Thank awesome. you. Great job. Thank you. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So I'm on my way to meet Ryan Jacobson, who is the head of the Farm Bureau. My vision for the grocery store at Shep's is unlike any grocery store I've ever seen. My goal is to have 100% of the produce supplied by local farmers. And the Farm Bureau, they represent all of these small farmers. This is really an important meeting. The Farm Bureau is the portal to all of these farmers, independent farmers. Without them, I don't have supply chain. What I'm going to ask Ryan to do is share his portfolio of farmers with me. Give me the list, give me the names, give me the numbers, let me figure it out from here. I'll get this stuff sold. That's what I'm hoping for. Janine is going to meet me at the Farm Bureau. She works for the Fresno Council of Governments, and she is so well connected. Hi. Hi, I'm Ryan. How are you doing? Oh my God, thank you for having us. Absolutely, no, Janine. thank you. Janine, nice to see nice you. To see you. Yeah, absolutely. So the Fresno County Farm Bureau is an advocacy organization for farmers and ranchers. We're gonna see it over here, so. This is quite the, this is quite the room. Essentially, we are the voice for farmers and ranchers when they can't be there. OK, so how many farmers are represented in this office? Uh, a couple thousand. A couple thousand. Yeah. I'm going to essentially make a farming play for small farming. The way that I'm going to transform Shepherds Inn is I'm going to create a deli and a grocery store. And I want to fill all that with produce from local farmers. Basically, a farmer's market style. Come out of the ground in the morning, and it's going to someone's dinner table at night. Yep. So if someone's coming to the deli, everything is made from everything that's in the grocery store. We're also in the process of creating a to-go bag delivery service. And that is going to have all fresh produce from that day. Bring us your stuff, and we'll sell it for you. Yeah. What do you think about the concept? Concepts intriguing. My ask from you is really simple. Could you come up with a list of small farmers that you think would be interested? And I don't want to put you under any pressure, but we have our soft opening in a week, so I'm hoping you can fast track it for me. That's a very, uh, yeah, quick timetable. I don't think I can do it without something like the Farm Bureau. Um, you know, we're all for opportunities for growers to take advantage of stuff like this. Lane's concepts seem to be very um, short on time, but as far as the actual what's going to take place, it's very exciting. Having a one-stop shop where there's a lot of farmers that bring all their products to one location, I think is something that people would be excited to see here locally. Everybody at the inn believe in the actual project of helping small farmers get the most for what they're growing. One road can lead to many roads. The important thing is to go and talk to people that you might not otherwise spend time with to find out if they can help you on your journey. The more farmers I have at Chef's Club selling their fresh food, the quicker I get to my million dollar valuation. So thank you so very much. I mean, literally, I'm so, so grateful. I'm no, really, thank you. Thank you. Nice very to meet much. you. Yeah, okay. absolutely. There's a long game here. If I have access to all of these local farmers, I can keep Chef's Club stocked with local produce for the whole year. This keeps revenue streaming long after the challenge is over. And we're going to get out of your hair. Yeah, but first, we've got to fill the shelves for the soft opening that's yeah. only a week away. After meeting with Ryan at the Farm Bureau, I can't wait to get back to Shep's. There's still so much that needs to get done, and I feel like I need to be there to manage things. How are you doing? I know it sounds really crazy, but don't jump. 
Am I nervous that it might not happen in 90 days because I'm in charge? No, it will only happen in 90 days because I'm in charge. Hi, everybody. This place is such a mess. We are doing so many projects at the same time. Tiny finally finished sanding all 24 hotel room floors. This morning, I told Tiny to start staining the floors. Normally, I wouldn't do this process like this because of the dust. It can get into everything and ruin the stain. And then you've got to re-sand and do it again. We just don't have a choice here if I want to get them done by the soft open. Whose room is this right now? Nobody? OK, so let's cut new rule. Doors have to stay closed. OK, new rule. Otherwise, we lock them and take all the handles off. On top of that, everyone's still living here, myself included. It's like we've got this game of musical rooms. Everybody's getting uprooted because we've got to get into the room and finish the room. So you just got to move. I mean, to say that people are stressed is such an understatement. Tiny, how you doing? TikTok, find another room. What about Chris's room? The one that we just cleaned out? Yeah. Yeah, remember then I sent everybody home because you guys said that. So I have nobody here now that's by myself. Why'd you send people home? Because earlier when we, we came, needed... we had five guys, but we were just standing around because we're waiting for people to get out of the room and clean stuff Oh out my God, and... that freaks me out. No, no. Why? Did you send anyone no, home? No, I send them home because- Call me. Call me, Elaine. I need, I have five guys. Are you kidding me? I had to send them home. They're looking for them to do. We're seven days away from the soft opening. We need all the help we can get. Hearing that Tiny sent his guys home is absolutely killing me. Please don't do that again. Sending guys home when we're in this situation, it gives me such panic, I can't even like even articulate it. You can see how stressed I am about our schedule. We've been here for almost three weeks straight and we haven't had a day off. I haven't had a day off. You know, I'm tired too, I'm human. If I told you to take the rest of the day off because we've been here That's totally that, different. That's was totally for different. Us to do. That's completely different. That I respect. Poor Tiny. Tiny got involved in this deal and it was just, he's friends with Jen, he wanted to help Jen. He's dying he's working so hard. So I, I, I needed to give my Lisa a day I off know. so that way they have time to relax. That's different. I wish so much I could tell Tiny why I'm pushing him so hard and that it's this 90 day challenge. I so wish I could tell him. I mean, I can get started, there's no problem. So I'll get started back there so when, when they come back tomorrow, they can get started on whatever they need to. All right, cool. Whenever I walk through the 11,000 square foot structure, I realize how much work there is to do and that my team, as ambitious and enthusiastic as they are, they're not construction people. And they don't understand how being out of order is causing us a lot more work. It's very stressful on the body, stressful on the mind. So we're all maxed. Soft opening is six days away, and it's a complete madhouse. Everybody's hustling and running all over. Go, 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 go. The landscaping is underway, and the painters are wrapping up. I think we can get up there, and we probably can hose that off. The pressure works, hose. OK. OK. The crispers are finally in the grocery store, but the refrigeration isn't hooked up. And the deli has not made much progress in the last few days. We still need to get lighting and flooring in here. We've got to build a checkout stand. I'm confident that the coffee shop is going to come together, but we're going to need to work on the inventory and the equipment. Hi, Elaine. Hey, hi. OK, this is the espresso machine. It's used. It's in Oregon. He can get it here in a couple days. It's $4,000. And I think it's the best bet. All right, uh, scale. Yeah, because we have to have a scale to weigh the beans. Properly. Grinder. So we do have to have a total of three grinders. I didn't realize that at first, but we do. I think you need to go through this with a fine tooth comb. OK. And if you're going to commit to this, why don't you make him an offer of $3,200 and see what okay. he says. Maybe you settle on 35 OK. OK. Elaine seems like a lady in charge. But I think her management style is quite chaotic. I'm kind of curious on how she ever relaxes or if she ever does. I got to go. I got so many things to do. OK. OK, Sounds bye. Good. Thank you. I do have concerns about us being able to open. The whole place kind of looks like it's a mess. Yeah. Each um, farmer, is we're going to give them a section, yeah. and we'll take care of the retail, so you wouldn't have to worry about any of that. I'm having Kelly reach out to local farmers. I'd like to get their produce into our grocery store, and I'd like to get it into the to-go bags for the delivery service. You would just have to provide your produce, and we'd be working on a consignment basis. I'm definitely interested, um, and I'm more than willing to work with you. Do you want me to show you the deli? She's been connecting with a bunch of contacts from the list that's been sent over by Ryan at the Farm Bureau. This is where the bar used to be. Elaine set me up with the task of finding the farmers for the grocery store. My next steps are getting everything secure with the farmers, making sure that we're all on the same page and getting them ready for the soft opening. I'm learning how to do all of this stuff, and it's kind of a lot to do all at once. 
but I want to make Elaine proud. I'm going to head it upstairs because I haven't seen what's going on upstairs. I originally brought Amanda in to manage the to-go bar, but with the way things are going, I've asked her to help me in managing the renovations upstairs. Eventually, Amanda's gonna have to turn her focus back to her bar when it's ready to be installed. I know it's gonna be a tight turnaround, but I actually think that she can handle that. So, but how many rooms do we have that are actually finished? We have two finished. How do we only have two finished? Some of the floors are still being done. Well, things need to get moving because you still have to finish the to-go bar. When Elaine asked me to run this to-go bar, I was ready to jump on this opportunity because I've opened up other bars here in town. But then I was helping out with other projects upstairs. This is where they built. They've been building stuff and... Okay, they need to get out of here. This got my schedule. There is a lot of pressure. Unless we're gonna move all the outlets. No. It weighs very heavy on me. This gym equipment is going to destroy this floor so quickly. I'm unsure of how this is going to get done, and the stress is real. It's so real. Oh my god, there's a lot of parts. Shoot, man. You don't need instructions. I don't need those stinking instructions. <laughs> the good news is they're not in any language. It's just pictures. <laughs> oh, good. We're going to go universal. Soft opening is in five days, and I want guests to see the newly remodeled upstairs. So I ordered 24 rooms worth of furniture. So cute. And since Tiny has finished staining the floors in some rooms, I've tasked Kelly and Gentry with helping me put the furniture together. A, E. This is A, your e. Allen wrench, uh -huh. right? B, C, D. You know what a nightmare this is? <laughs> I mean, I've been in the furniture business most of my adult life. I own a manufacturing company that makes furniture called Portabella. But personally, I've never built a bed, like put it together. Yes. I just hope it doesn't fall apart. The good news is, is I'm saving a lot of money on labor. <laughs> How many blondes does it take to put together a bed? A lot, darling, a lot. It takes a <laughs> lot of blondes. Is there an Allen wrench drill? It literally doesn't fit. OK, got it. I had it upside down. What do I know? <laughs> and helping Elaine with this project is just very it doesn't show you what way it goes. But these two are up. I wouldn't know how to put that into words. So it's wrong. This is upside no, down. No, this is right. It's really amazing to watch, actually. <laughs> I think I stuck the wrong end of the Allen wrench. <laughs> it's stuck. Now we have to just like screw all these in with screws or something. Allen wrench hell. There's going to be no serious action on any of these beds. <laughs> or it's breaking. <laughs> In the beginning, when Elaine got here, I didn't see the same vision that she could. I'm feeling like I'm being punished. <laughs> but the more she started like explaining it, I'm excited to see what Sheps is going to be. So have you ever seen one of these work? Tomorrow, it's going to be like this big. Whoop. It's nice to see this progress and see a room come together, but we have a long way to go, both upstairs and downstairs, before we can have people come by. Hit the light on the way out. All right, 23 rooms left to go. It's so impossible to find a clean room around here. Everybody's always here. There's always people in and out of our rooms. Everything's just getting close to, like, opening time, so everything is crazy right now. And at this point, it's really critical that I'm with my team in the morning. So if I'm staying here at the end 24-7, I showered with no shower curtain, no door, and uh, just hoping somebody wasn't going to walk by at the wrong time, because um, they would have gotten a show. But that's OK. We're just doing what we can just to get ready for the day. Everything has just been really chaotic and really just all over the place. So I'm definitely anticipating the day that all this construction is over with. It'll be a lot easier. Oh, no, 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 no. We need this floor stain. Oh, OK. This is, I, I fully expect to stay the floor. You can't have the stain on the floor. It's like eight hours of drying, and your guys are going to be walking. I know. Yeah, that's why it's going to happen last night. And then 
then I was gonna put grant board down, and then tonight put on codes. We lost a whole day. Yeah. Honey, we have to stick to a schedule. If you change it, you gotta call me. On the schedule last night, I had Tiny staining the upstairs hallway while we were all sleeping. I know I'm putting a lot of pressure on him, but we got to work around the clock to get it done, and it didn't get done. This was supposed to be dark. We were supposed to put ram board, and we are supposed to put the furniture in. The whole point of staining the floors at night was so that in the morning they would be dry after eight hours of dry time. People have to work. We have to walk around. Now no one can walk around. The idea of everybody working at the same time at different jobs on top of one another is really causing a lot of strife. This is setting me back a day, and it's a day I don't have. Please, begging you, can no, just... Yeah, I mean, I can do it, but it's kind of hard when you have people stop us to, to, to sand a couple what days you, ago. What do you need to get this from? To do, I just need people to get out. Yeah. But I mean, on top of that, if people so are going to be walking in here... So everybody needs to get out of here, and that includes the film crew. Everybody just needs to go, because this is f***ing up my schedule. Don't change the schedule anymore. Nobody. Not over filming, not over anything. You cannot change the schedule. If you change the schedule, we will not make it. We have to stick to the schedule. I can't have a private meltdown. We just needs to go because it's not my schedule. Meeting in the back. Let's go. Meeting in the back. Meeting in the back. Back out there. Come on, you too. Come on. Everybody meeting, 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 meeting. After the surprise schedule change this morning, I'm gathering the team to make sure that we're all on the same page. OK, thank you all very much for uh, five minutes impromptu. I'm really grateful that we're all here. And I know we don't know each other very well, but the soft opening is in three days. So it is definitely very anxiety inducing to know that we're not near ready to open. There's a lot that still needs to be done, and it's on everybody's mind. But what does soft opening mean? Soft opening means that the people that are actually going to be working here in the food industry need to be able to start practicing what that looks like. We're only going to be open for a day or two, and it's just for friends and family. It's so that we can test out how we serve food. This is going to help us in knowing what to improve on and getting ready for our grand opening on day 90. Somebody used the word deployment, like how do you get the food from one place to another going around? So we definitely need the kitchen, the deli, that is food fresh, food prepared, food distributed. So those things have got to be working. So second, Amanda's bar is dragging and it's the first thing you see. So we've got a carpenter coming to put the bar top on, but if today we could possibly at least get her sink in and over and her drink well in and over, that would be great also today. What would be ideal would be, please beg you to not go upstairs in the front half because Tiny is completely stretched and what he was supposed to get done last night that he didn't get done cost us an entire day. Concentrate, please, especially Blair and Damien, if you guys could get the plumbing and the electrical in the bar so we can just slide everything in. Everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, everybody go inside and go back to work. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. freaking awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've only got three days left before the soft opening, and I feel severe anxiety about the fact that there's so much dirt and we're not ready. Okay. All right, we're good. Yay. You know that saying? Never let them see you sweat. If I come unglued, everyone comes unglued. All the motivation is lost. Same different day. If we keep not moving forward, we are not going to get to our goal. We have the same issues now that we had in the beginning of the week. What do we need extra help for today? I, I need to work on this refrigeration thing. Okay. But I've got to keep it together. There's so much riding on this. There's the soft opening. There's the 90-day challenge. And there's making this place successful for Russ's future. The pressure builds by the second. It keeps me up at night. It Like, I have a rash. I'm like, I can't, I'm just like, it makes me twitch. It's so stressful. Uh, we are we are